All right, part two of section 2.6, um, a special function called the greatest integer function. Sometimes this is called the floor function, or a lot of people will call it the step function, which you'll understand after we graph a couple of them. The greatest integer of x is written as x within a bracket. In some books, it's written with a double bracket, just so you don't get confused. That means the greatest integer of x as well. What it means is the greatest integer that is not bigger than x. Now remember, integers are things that are not fractions. Probably the easiest way to remember this is that we want to know what's the number to the left, because that number would not be greater than it. So if we're thinking about 7.5, we would have 7.5, and the number that's just to the left of it is 7. So the greatest integer of 7.5 is 7. So if we have negative 6.3, we would be right here. What number is to the left? Negative 7. So people get the negative ones wrong quite often, so you have to be careful on the negative problems. All right, what's the greatest integer of 4 and 3 fourths? Or what number is to the left of that? Well, that would be 4. Hopefully you can stop using the number lines. Negative 3 and 5 6. If we use this number line, that would be about here. The number to the left of that would be negative 4. Okay, so if you think about it this way, as the number to the left and I'm pretty confident we are going to get most of those right. Now what we're going to do is use this information to graph greatest integer functions. The parent graph, or the most basic one, is y is equal to the greatest integer of x. Now to do these problems we're going to make these huge charts and within the charts we're going to pick any numbers that we want but we like to pick a whole bunch of decimals in between whole numbers. So I started with negative 2. What integer is to the left of negative 2? Well it is an integer so its answer is itself. So if it is an integer that's just the answer. What number is to the left of negative 1.8? Negative 2. To the left of negative 1.6? Negative 2. Negative 2. Negative 2. But when you get to negative 1, that is an integer, so his answer is negative 1. What's to the left of negative 0 0.9? Negative 1. 0.8 or 0.7? Negative 1. So you can see we didn't even stay in the same pattern here. I used even numbers. Now I went to odd decimals. It doesn't make a difference. These are all negative 1s. 0 is an integer, so we pick 0. Okay, what number is to the left of 0.4? Well, that would be 0. 0.6 would be 0. 0.9 would be 0. 1 would be 1. What's to the left of 1.3? 1. 1. 1. 2. And so you can see that you start to get a lot of the same answers. And what we're going to do is just go back to the top of our chart and we're going to graph these points. Okay? Negative 2, negative 2 is on the graph. Negative 1.8, negative 2. Negative 1.6, negative 2. Negative 1.4, negative 2. Negative 1.2, negative 2. But at negative 1, it goes to negative 1. At negative 0.9, we're at negative 1, 0 0.7, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, and then we get to 0, 0. Okay, keep going. 0 0.4, 0. 0 0.6, 0. 0.9, 0. 1, 1. 
1, 1 1.51, 1.81, 1 .81, 2, 2. And I'm going to stop because we can kind of see that there's a pattern here. Now remember, I just randomly picked these decimals. There was no reason I didn't pick 1.9, negative 1.7, negative. We could have picked all of those in here. So wouldn't you agree that these dots, I could fill all of these dots in down here? And so what that would tell me is all of these numbers would work. But as soon as I got to negative 1, it's negative 1. So I have to put an open circle here and jump up here. So we can just start repeating that pattern and get our step function. So my chart didn't really have to be that big. We can just keep going with our step function. We can also go this way with our step function. Now I'm calling it a function because it passes the vertical line test. Because if we draw a vertical line, I'm not hitting the open circle because that means it's not included. I'm only hitting the closed circle, and if we hit it one time, we're okay. So it is a function, and all I did was plot these points. All right, so let's try another one. This is what we call, again, our parent graph, which is our most basic step function. So it's going to look like that every time. All right, so what happens if we want to graph y equals the greatest integer of x minus 2. Now if I've done a lot of work for you in the next slide. We're first going to take this number x and we're going to subtract 2 from all of them and then we're going to take the greatest integer of it. So I went ahead and I filled in all of the minus 2's for us. So negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Negative 1.8 minus 2 is negative 3.8. So now we're just going to take the greatest integer of all of those. So that's an integer so it's still an integer. What's to the left of negative 3.8? Negative 4. Negative 4, negative 4, negative 4. So those are all to the left. Okay? So then we have an integer again, so it's negative 3. So all of these two points are all going to be negative 3's. Now remember, I said our chart didn't need to be that big. So I'm going to go ahead and stop and see if I can get a pattern so that I don't have to do all that work. Now we need to notice that this point from this one is negative 2, negative 4. This point is negative 1.8, comma, negative 4. So we're using the x and then the y value. So the first and the last columns. So negative 2, negative 4 works. Negative 1.8, negative 4. And then I did 1.6, 1 1.4, 1 1.4. So all of these, until I get to the next whole number, which is negative 1, negative 3. Negative 1, negative 3. And then I started to hit all negative 3's until I got to 0, negative 2. So all of these, so we would open circle, draw the line. Open circle, draw the line. So I don't really need to finish my chart. I can see my pattern and I can just start copying it. And these would come out if I finished my chart. And we could extend the pattern down too. And you could go all the way up forever and ever. So let's take a look at the comparison between the two. Our first one, I always like to look at the origin. So if we look at this one, we were on 0, 0 and we went out to 1 and then we made our steps. So I'm going to go down to that one that we were working on. And our parent graph was here. So I'm going to make my steps now to make a few of them. And I would like us to notice, what did this orange graph do? How did the orange graph turn into the blue graph? Well, I would say, let's look at this piece compared to this piece. And I would say that it went down Two. Kind of looks like they are all down two. But we also might notice that we could compare these two. 
And we would say what about that move? That it moved to the right two. Now which one do you think it did? It kind of looks like it did both. But if we think back to our absolute value graphs, when we did it on the inside, which way did it move? Those were left and right moves, so I would say that this one has moved to the right two. And then that's how I would describe what this graph did. So if we want to use the same theories that we used in our other graphs, we would want to say that it went to the right two. Now we're going to investigate this and see if this is how this works. So I want you to get your graphing calculator out and I'm going to have you investigate this and come back for me tomorrow and tell me what you found. Here's the graphs I want you to create on your graphing calculator and write down how did they move. so that we can figure out what the shifts are for the greatest integer graph. Now to do the greatest integer you're going to go to y equals and then you're going to go math number and you're going to pick the int function and that's going to be just like the bars for greatest integer. So whatever you put inside parentheses would be inside the bars and if you want it outside the bars then you have to put it on the outside of the parentheses. So I want you to test the following graphs and then write down what they look like and how they moved compared to the parent graph which was our orange one. So you might want to just start off with doing the greatest integer of x, just so you can see on your calculator how that works. It's going to depend on how that looks, on how old your calculator is. It'll be different for different people. Then let's go ahead and test the one that we just did, x minus 2. Just see if we did our graph correct. So see if our blue one's correct. Then we're going to test and see what happens if we do that subtracting 2 on the outside of the greatest integer and see what that does. See if that moves us down to instead of right to. Finish testing the rest of these, writing down how they each move. Try and squeeze two more in here. So you got eight of them to do. Won't take you too long once you get used to how you type them in on your graphing calculator. Give those a try. Write down what each one does, looks like, and then how it's shifted from this original one. So make the comparison so that you can learn how to do the shifts. Then these graphs won't take these huge charts to create.